Sadat wa Sadat, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, we received many suggestions that this uh, script should be in English, but we made uh, a little calculation. We found that most of our viewers are professional doctors, aviators, uh, but a, a great deal of our viewers also uh, are engineering, uh, from the uh, engineering education, uh, from teaching fields, uh, bankers, and also we have uh, students, uh, pilots, and uh, students, uh, and high school students. So we decided that these uh, episodes are going to be both in Arabic and English language until we find uh, a way to uh, make the translated scripts on the screen. Uh, تلاقينا عدة مقترحات بأن تكون هذه القناة باللغة العربية أو الإنجليزية ولكن عملنا إحصائية بسيطة وجدنا الكثير من المشاهدين الذين يتابعون هذه القناة من فئة الطيارين المحترفين الأطباء كذلك في, ديفرنت في مختلف التخصصات وبعض فئات المجتمع من المدرسين والفنيين وكذلك البانكرز العاملين في البنوك وكذلك يوجد طلبة الطيران وطلبة من الثانوية العليا لذلك قررنا أن تكون هذه الحلقات باللغتين إلى أن نستطيع أن نترجم ترجمة فورية على الشاشة in the beginning, I would like to uh, thanks again the uh, Saudi Pilot Association, uh, the society in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, for their continuous and tremendous efforts uh, to support this channel. And uh, they are having so many plans, it's still a milestone, but uh, they are planning, for example, uh, to initiate and push uh, to uh, establish uh, an Euro new aeronautical university for aviation uh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and um, they are uh, planning to uh, communicate with the higher education authorities. حقيقة الشكر موصول لجمعية الطيارين السعوديين بالمملكة العربية السعودية الذين يدعمون هذه القناة من خلف الكواليس وجودهم حقيقة مقدر في آخر اجتماع لهم كانوا يتحدثون عن البدء في عمل مشروع جامعة لدراسة الطيران في المملكة العربية السعودية أو Aeronautical Science University وهذا مشروع كبير ومقدر جهودهم في هذا الشأن. Today we will be talking about error generation in the brain. Uh, how error are propagated and processed in the different pathways in the brain until they uh, end up in a chain of events that will lead to a disastrous uh, uh, con uh, consequences. سنتحدث اليوم عن كيفية نشوء الخطأ في الدماغ كيف يتكون وأين يسافر وبأي طريقة ينتقل من خلية إلى أخرى حتى يؤدي إلى حدوث السلسلة من الأخطاء التي تؤدي بالتالي إلى كارثة جوية تحصد الكثير من الأرواح. We start by defining error. Error is defined as failure. To, to of, of a planned action to be uh, completed as uh, desired or failure of a planned action to be executed as desired. Therefore, we have problems with the computer manufacturers, uh, nuclear reactants, uh, military operations, lab leakage, chemical spills, and policies and procedures. الخطأ يعرف بأنه فشل في عملية الأنظمة والإجراءات مما يؤدي إلى حدوث أخطاء في الصناعات في الحواسيب كذلك حدوث أخطاء 
في العمليات العسكرية وقد يؤدي أيضا إلى حدوث تسرب من المعامل كما حدث في سارس 2 اللي هو كوفيد 19 بانديميك والذي ما زلنا نعاني منهم حتى يومنا هذا Error is part of norm. It is part of our normal life. It does not mean that the person is not intelligent, intelligent, or he is not understanding, or he is not having careful thought. حدوث الخطأ لا يعني بالضرورة إن الشخص لا يتمتع بالذكاء الكافي أو أنه يفتقد إلى طريقة التفكير. الطبيعية للإنسان الطبيعي. Since the beginning of creation, the relation between man and machine has a constant coefficient, which is error. This is because of the formation of man-machine complex and due to the inevitable human limitation. منذ الأزل العلاقة بين الرجل والآلة. توجد علاقة أو معامل ثابت كما هو في الرياضيات هذا المعامل هو وجود أو حدوث الخطأ هذا المعامل التي جت لتكوين الرجل الآلة كومبلكس ونتيجة لأنه مهما كان الإنسان من الذكاء ومن الحرفية ف there is حدود لل competence أو قدرة الإنسان على تنفيذ الأشياء بصورة مكتملة. Examples of error in aviation: lack of ground proximity awareness. Actually, this is a very very important issue. Uh, usually, most of air accidents occur whenever the flight is near the ground. Uh, so, about 60% of air accidents occur during the 4% that the aircraft is spent near the ground. Uh, عشان كده حوادث الطيران تحدث دائما قرب المطارات in the vicinity of airports وعدم أو فقنان الـ situation الـ awareness للـ pilot في حكاية معرفة الـ ground proximity this is a very important the cause of fatal air accidents, shutting down the wrong engine, touchdown uh, or landing without gears, slight deploy, failure to arm and cross check. Uh, touchdown without uh, landing gear, uh, we know that the PIA, PIA uh, flight number, uh, I think, F303. Uh, which uh, goes down in uh, May 22 of this year. Uh, a very uh, uh, common uh, or a, a very identified and known uh, error. Uh, we call it in aviation practice uh, uh, environmental capture or habituation that the pilot landed without gears. The problem is with this pilot, even though he made a crash landing without gear, he again took off. I don't know why. This is a very serious question. Uh, you have the aircraft already in the ground and you made a crash landing. Stay where you are. Do not try to uh, fly again. Uh, slide deploy is related to inattention. Uh, mistakes and uh, actually due to preoccupation of the short memory. After تنزيل a slide, كما تعلمون بالنسبة للأخوة الملاحين وقدكم الكبيرة نزول a slide هو due to inattention 
or a pre-occupation of the short memory, ممكن الإنسان يكون مشغول بتليفون كول or بمحادثة هاتفية أو يفكر بعد هذه الرحلة أين سيذهب. So please be careful when you open your doors. Talking about error generation, we have to talk about the memory. Uh, the memory is defined as the ability of the brain to register information, store them, associate them together, and recall them whenever it is needed. And when we talk about the mistakes, we need to talk about the memory. For the memory, it is important in the events of mistakes. وتعرف الذاكرة بأنها قدرة أو قابلية الدماء على تسجيل المعلومات وتخزينها والربط بينها ثم استدعاء هذه المعلومات عندما يحتاجها الدماء وتتكون خلايا المخ من كما تعلمون جميعا من 21 مليار خلية Associated ترتبط مع بعضها البعض بسلسلة معقدة جدا من الروابط العصبية. The brain cells contain about 21 billions of cells which are associated together by a complex series of linkages which is the one called neuronal axons. Uh, the memory is divided into three parts, short, long, and working memory. The short memory refers to information which is retained in the brain for a short time and then forgotten, like two to eight seconds, like uh, remembering a phone number. Uh, the short memory also is divided into two parts, which is the iconic memory, the visual memory, and the iconic memory, the hearing or the auditory memory. The visual memory actually lasts from two to eight seconds and the auditory memory lasts about uh, up to three minutes. Therefore, uh, usually the auditory uh, alarm is much more or has a more serious impact on the vigilance and attention of the pilots or any professional uh, surgeon when they hear uh, the alarm, uh, auditory alarm, uh, it will uh, draw their attention more than other uh, alarms. تنقسم الذاكرة إلى ثلاثة أنواع الذاكرة القصيرة والذاكرة الطويلة والذاكرة الفعالة أو الذاكرة العملية. الذاكرة القصيرة هي التي تجمع المعلومات لفترة قصيرة مثل قراءة رقم تليفون يحتفظ به الدماغ من حوالي ثانيتين إلى ثمان ثواني الذاكرة القصيرة نفسها تنقسم إلى ذاكرة بصرية وذاكرة سمعية الذاكرة البصرية أقل احتفاظا بالمعلومات بينما الذاكرة السمعية هي أكثر احتفاظ بالمعلومات تحتفظ بالمعلومة لمدة ثلاث دقائق unless the individual أو الشخص يقوم بعمل rehearsing أو rehearsal للمعلومة عدة مرات لذلك معظم الإنذارات التي تحدث في غرفة القيادة هي إنذارات سمعية مثلا الجي بي دبليو اس جراوند بروكسيمتي وورنينج سيستم عندما يكون الطيار قريبا جدا من الأرض يصيح هذا الجهاز بصورة مخيفة جدا بول أب بول أب تو فور ذا بايلوت بالنسبة للطيار مفروض يحط مور فراتل قوة ويرفع الطيارة immediately هناك عدة إنذارات في قمرة القيادة من ضمنها المال positioning of the flap عندما تكون الجريحات غير مضبوطة أو في وضع غير مناسب 
او في حاله تسرب الاكسجين او ما يعرف بالدي كومبريشن تنطلق هذه الارمات Flight slow. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Sink rate. Pull up. Terrain. Pull up. Don't sink. Don't sink. Too low. Terrain. Too low. Gear. Too low. Flaps. Too low. Terrain. Flight slow. Too low. Terrain. Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Too low. Flat. Too low. Gear. Too low. Terrain. Climb. 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 Climb now. Descend. 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 Descend now. Tikal system test fail. Traffic. Traffic. Clear of conflict. 2,500, 1,500, 400, 300, minimum 200, 100 above, 170, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, retard, retard, 5. As we say, the auditory alarms are more serious, uh, has more serious impacts on the memory and the uh, we will uh, listen to uh, some of these alarms in this uh, script. The ICU's alarm also are very important. You have the alarm of the uh, monitor, AKG monitor. You have the alarm of the infusion pumps, the ventilator, the intraortic balloon. You have the alarm also of the lung heart bypass machine this will draw the attention immediately of uh, the surgeon so uh, the short memory is located in the frontal lobe the frontal lobe also contains the short memory uh, the short memory center, the error center, the lies center, and motion and emotion. في الفصل العامي تقع الذاكرة القصيرة أو مركز الخطأ في الدماغ، مركز مركز الكذب ومركز العواطف والحركة. كلا لين لين لم ينتهي لنسفان بالناصية ناصية. خاطئة كاذبة uh, طيب uh, What are the organ of orientation? Uh, the organ of orientation is the visual, the auditory, the smell, the taste uh, These are uh, the sensual uh, organ of uh, orientation and they receive their backup support from the proprioception receptors in the periphery or peripheral nerves, nerves to tell you what is your position in the space. So a uh, combined uh, uh, sensory input with proprioception will give you a complete picture of your uh, situation and awareness. بمعنى الحواس البصرية والسمعية والشم واللمس كل هذه تعطيك صورة عن ما يدور حولك situation awareness كذلك هناك مساندة من الحساسات الموجودة في الأعصاب الطرفية التي تدل الجسم على موقعه في الفضاء in the space ليس الفضاء الفضاء لكن الفضاء the surrounding الذي حولك تتجمع هذه المعلومات في الذاكرة القصيرة all this information are collected in the short memory and after that they will travel to the center of the long memory 
The center of the low memory is situated in the occipital lobe. مركز الذاكرة الطويلة يقع في مؤخرة الدماغ عكس الناصية. الذاكرة الطويلة هي المعلومات التي تخزن في مستودع الضخم أو مستودع ضخم في الدماغ. وتحتوي على الخبرات السابقة والدروس والفنيات التي اكتسبها المرء في حياته. Actually, the long memory is defined or is held in high capacity stores in the brain. It is near the visual. Center in the brain, and it is contains all the accumulated experience, knowledge, and skills that you gain throughout your life. So before they pass into the long memory, it will be held in a place called the hippocampus. As the name implies, it's a compass. That is a master key, very important for the memory. Before the short memory and all information, whether it's sensual or auditory, will be held in the stores in the long memory. It will pass by the hippocampus. Short memory is also affected by experience, by culture. Perception and different experience from one individual to another. So we said all this information travel through to go to the long memory. The long memory is very high capacity store. It is the center of accumulated knowledge, skills, and experience. Before this information passes to the long memory, it will pass uh, by the hippocampus. The hippocampus uh, is a very delicate device. Uh, it is actually, uh, as the name implies, it's a campus. It's, it's a camp for uh, information, uh, different information. Information usually stays in the hippocampus for uh, weeks and sometimes for months. Uh, the information in the hippocampus will be uh, divided into packages. Uh, each package, each package will be sent to a certain area. Uh, like for example, one package will go to the uh, long memory. Other package will be thrown in a basket for uh, to be formatted during uh, rapid eye movement sleep. A third package will be uh, thrown in the basket of déjà vu. Uh, like for example, uh, you will smell a perfume, then you will remember, you will try to remember where I smelled this before, or uh, you will uh, pass through a situation uh, that you will touch yourself. I've been through this uh, situation uh, before. So, um, the hippocampus also is the center of uh, uh, different types of memory. Uh, the emotional uh, memories. يا جارة الوادي طربت عجبي ما يشبه الأحلام من ذكرك مثلت في الذكرى هواك وفي الكرا والذكريات صدر السنين الحاكي. لم أدري ما طيب العناق على الهوى حتى ترفق سعيدي في طواكي وتأودت أطراف بارك في يدي وأحمر من خفرهما خداك فدخلت في ليلين فرعك والدجا ولثمتك الصبح المنور فاك أحمد شوقي يتغزل في لبنان ومن الذكريات أيضا الموجودة في الهيبامس أمين تذكر جيران بدي سلمي 
قد اجتدمع الجرام مقلة بدمي أمهبت الريح من تلقاء كاظمة وأومض البرق في الظلماء من إضمي فما لعينيك إن قلت كفف حمتا وما لقلبك إن قلت استفق يهمي ولم يستطع شوقي صبر فرد على البصير ريم على القاع بين الباني والعلم أحل سفك دمي في الأشهر الحرم رمى القضاء بعيني جذرا أسدا يا ساكن القاع أدرك ساكن الأجم يا ناعس الطرف لا ذقت الهوى أبدا أسهرت مضناك في حفظ الهوى فنمي المتربي يناجي ربه فليتك تحلو والحياة مريرة وليتك ترضى والأنام غضاب وليت الذي بيني وبينك عامر وبيني وبين العالمين خراب إذا صح منك الود فالكل هين وكل الذي فوق التراب تراب هذا فقط مجرد استطراد لتغيير الموضوع وعلى بصابتكم بالمال Uh, the working memory, actually all the information which is available, it is actually the short memory with the information currently available for you, supported and backed up by the long memory. Like for example, a pre takeoff checklist, you will check your takeoff weight, uh, you know when you reach 80 knots, you can reject takeoff. Then you reach V1, velocity 1, you cannot reject takeoff. All this information are registered in your brain. You know your <coughs> uh, takeoff runway, like 36 left, you will maintain runway heading. <coughs> you will reach uh, V2, rotate, and then uh, V2 will be, say, uh, like uh, 140. Uh, maintain 360 at 5000, you will take a right turn 180 degrees. So this is the information, you know what is your uh, pre-flight takeoff weight, your position of the flaps will be 15 degrees, <coughs> and uh, your V1 will be uh, 136, V2 say 140 for example, and then uh, similarly uh, in anesthesia room there is uh, pre-induction uh, you will check your ventilator on uh, volume control plus psi for example or SIMV or CPAP you will check your infusion pump how many dubutamine how many mics per kg you're giving to your tricks uh, uh, do you need to give a level fed <coughs> And then during induction uh, phase of anesthesia, you will also check your electrolytes, you will check the oxygenation uh, saturation of the patients, your ECG, if there is any dysrhythmias or whatsoever, and post-induction before you take the patient to recovery room, you will check all these things <coughs> before sending to recovery room. This is what we call uh, the working memory. Now you're taking off uh, and you had an engine failure suddenly. What will happen here? All the short memory, the working memory, the long memory, the hippocampus, all these uh, devices will be implemented to give you the necessary information to take off, uh, to take care of this engine failure. So you have engine failure, you have now your flaps at five, your uh, air speed is 300 knots, uh, your altitude say like 20,000 feet, uh, you have all this information, you will uh, uh, shut down the uh, engine which is failed or 
put it off, uh, you will use the rudder to maintain the balance of the aircraft and you will uh, recall all the information in the long memory, your past experience, accumulated knowledge, your skills, all will come uh, to be handy at your uh, hand at the time. So the pilot has a cycle and the, the surgeon also has a cycle. This uh, cycle is uh, detection of the problem, diagnosis of the problem, decision and execution of your action. Actually detection of the problem is when you hear the alarm, you will hear the alarm, you will know that there is a problem. Uh, whether it's uh, engine failure, uh, smoke in the cockpit, in the cargo compartment, malpositioning of the flaps, uh, decompression, you will be able to hear it the same for the surgeon if he hear uh, any alarm in the operating theater, uh, if he see abnormal arrhythmias, bigeminis, trigeminis, he will check the electrolytes, the chest tube output, the urinary output, the oxygenation system, the ventilator, what's going on. So this is detection of the problem. Now how to diagnose the problem? Actually we have two types of attention, selective attention and divided attention. The selective attention the British call this cocktail party effects. Uh, it's ju just like when you go into a party, you will uh, notice that George is wearing a blue tie, uh, Wilson is wearing a black jacket, uh, Sarah is wearing a red dress. Uh, there is a big table in the middle, there is a band at the back of the table playing some uh, music. So you will process information from different resources to form an idea of your surrounding and situational awareness. Um, this is, uh, is the same in the cockpits. You have numerous bits and pieces of information uh, coming from different displays in the cockpits. You have information from HSI, you have information from the heading button, you have information from the air speeds, altitudes, the flap position, uh, all this information. You have to collect all this information from uh, different resources. The other type of attention is divided attention, is when you process information from one single source like it's a coning of attention or tunnel vision. So when you focus on your uh, communication uh, while you have a serious problem going in the cockpit or uh, you're talking about uh, any uh, nonsense uh, subjects, the, the co-pilots, uh, this is divided attention and most probably it will end up in uh, a disaster. So uh, you have to, after you process all this information from different sensory stimuli, there is the brain perception. Uh, your brain will uh, percept all this information for you to reach a decision. Now decision making is a single one channel process which means that one piece of information is being processed to the brain while the other pieces are held temporarily in the short memory until it is processed. So this is how it works. Do not, there is no other way to go around. So you take your time, there is no panic, uh, there is no aggravated reaction. Take your time, find where's the problem, because you cannot have all these informations engulfed in your brain in a single fraction of a second. 
after that there is execution of your action the action is has to be the one one single right action otherwise he will end up killing many people okay there are some factors which affect decision making these are uh, three factors internal external and social factors the internal factors is improper technique uh, overconfidence which leads to insufficient care and uh, improper cognitive style uh, the cognitive style of the pilot is very important we have many, many different cognitive styles. I'll be talking uh, about it in the near future, uh, maybe uh, the next episode, so the episodes after the next one. The cognitive style, uh, we have pilots uh, a type of personalities. They are vulnerable or prone to commit errors more than other. Uh, this uh, uh, will be uh, very obvious uh, for us as uh, aviation doctors. Uh, we can detect these problems by many psychometric skills, the Minnesota MBBI2, the Bex Hamilton, the Sheehan psychometric scale. So we will be able, if this uh, person is vulnerable, uh, to commit uh, errors during flying. The external factors are two, the ergonomics and economics. Ergonomics factor is the anthropometric uh, factors. Anthropometry means the relation of the body of the pilot, of the pilot to the cockpit uh, equipment. Uh, the relation of the weight, height, uh, the anthropometry, uh, the the, the, the length of the torso compared to the hands, all these are very important in uh, decision making. Uh, it is not very important now uh, because of the uh, new uh, aircraft, the 377s, the Airbus 380, but it is still mentioned as uh, uh, factors which affect uh, decision making and error generations. So uh, you cannot have uh, like a short pilot uh, jumping up to reach the overhead compartments during emergency. Uh, this will affect uh, the action and decision making of the pilots. Um, the economic factors, we know that in civil uh, commercial aviation, the overwhelming pressure is coming from uh, uh, the operator is uh, has to make a benefits has to make uh, a, a trend name a reputation uh, so there is a continuous pressure on the cockpit uh, and on the air crew in the flight scheduler uh, traffic uh, all these people uh, the operator need uh, maximum uh, production and maximum utilization for these uh, pilots uh, to make uh, the, the target uh, benefits of the airlines. Uh, otherwise, the, in the uh, aviation industry is very vulnerable uh, to bankruptcy uh, if uh, you don't have uh, a good uh, cruise operating uh, all the time, uh, uh, so um, this uh, economic pressure might put pres pressure on the cockpits and uh, uh, cabin crew. Uh, you have a flight going to uh, Jeddah, Cairo, Jeddah, Nairobi. There is a need to utilize the crew, a need to utilize the equipment itself for the aircraft uh, to stay. Uh, one hour uh, on the ground, it will cost the airline more than $10,000 per hour. So there is a continuous need for these aircraft to be in the sky. 
scrolling uh, left and right. Um, so you have this flight in Cairo and there is a delay, there is pressure in the scheduling capacity of the airlines. There is something called crew legality. That, uh, be be beyond the legality, the crew cannot uh, uh, fly anymore. And uh, this is, uh, is one of the types of the stressors. The social factors which will affect uh, the cockpit uh, is, uh, uh, you know, we know that the uh, cockpits, they are human being, they have families, they have kids, they have uh, fathers, parents, uh, so they need to be socially uh, attached to these uh, families and uh, the continuous pressure on the crew uh, financial pressure, social pressure, uh, occasions pressure, uh, like going to funerals, going to uh, weddings, all this will affect the pilots, so uh, it will affect decision making. Uh, at the end, uh, I would like to thank you so much for your listening. We have many, many episodes coming, inshallah, we will explain so many uh, aviation problems and uh, for now I thank you uh, so much Sayyidati Sadati Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Shukran li istiba'ikum Nultaqi bikum qariban inshallah fi halakatil qadima wa madi'i shatta wa mukhtalifa Arju an tahuza ala yajarikum Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh